Hi everyone, so in this lab we're going to be covering the basics of the Linux terminal, directories, applications, and other tools, Linux user accounts, and group and permissions. So we're going to start with the most basic level, which is reconnaissance, and we'll be starting with task one, so understanding what a directory is. We will start with the command pwd, and so this stands for print working directory. All this is going to do is display information about the current working directory. So my username is Logie, so you can see it printed um, that right here. So yours will be different. It will be whatever your username is, which is most likely Kali. So it has slash home slash and then your username. Um, so for me, the file Loki is located in the home file and then home is inside the file slash and so the file slash is a special file that is called the root directory. So it's basically the highest file in the Linux file system. So the command pwd will provide you with the absolute path, meaning the full name of that given directory. So it's going to show the full path from the root directory slash to the file or folder, which is why it shows slash home slash Loki. All right, and so task two um, is going to be listing folders and files contained within a directory. So we'll start by typing the command ls. And so ls stands for list and will list the contents of the current working directory. So if we wanted to be specific, we could use a flag. Um, two different ones are dash a and then dash l. So we could do the first one and then we'll go ahead and do the second. So we get different outputs when we do ls versus the following two. So the one with dash a will list files that are hidden. So this includes files that start with um, dot. So most of these start with dot. Um, and then the minus l will display a long listing that includes a bunch of additional information about the content, um, including information about the owner and permissions, which we will get into later. You can also do a combination of both of them. So you could do ls la or you could do ls dash l dash a all right so now we're going to move on to task three which is how to create and change directories so we're now going to learn how to create a directory and then how to change the working directory so i'm going to go ahead and type the command Okay, and just a reminder that Loki is my username, so your username will be different. Next, we will go ahead and make the directory. Okay. And next, we will, let's do CD Cyber. Um, PWD. Okay, so this is just a reminder to replace where I have Loki um, with your username. So the absolute, uh, the out output is an absolute path to the new directory. So it's the full name of that given directory. When we did CD Cyber, we used a relative path, meaning the path relative to the current working directory. We could have also done CD um, slash home slash uh, lo Loki slash cyber to use an absolute path. Um, you can also, just a quick trick, you could use the tab button on your keyboard to um, automatically complete either a file name or a command. So that way you can save time on typing. So pretty handy. All right, and so now we will move on to task four, which is traverse to the parent directory. So there can be a lot of typing when trying to move up a single directory level by using the specification dot dot however you can refer to the directory above the current working directory so we could do something like and then if we did cd dot dot and then pwd so we can see that we are one directory level up as how we were here 
Um, we can also delete directories. So we're first going to run a listing and then delete the directory um, and then run another listing to confirm that it has been removed. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, where is Cyber? So Cyber is here. Now we will delete Cyber. Then we're going to go do another listing and confirm it is no longer there. So RMDIR stands for remove directory. Um, its only purpose is to delete a specified directory given the relative or absolute path. All right, and that is going to wrap up the reconnaissance level of this lab. I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, so now we're going to move on to the access and escalation portion of this lab. So we will be starting with task five, which is running Firefox. So we can launch the Firefox web browser with the command Firefox. So the terminal runs the process and then is going to open the web browser Firefox window. All right. So this runs as part of the graphical user interface versus the command line interface. So we can see images and use the mouse. All right. So when running the program, you are unable to run any other commands in the terminal since that session is occupied by Firefox. So we can see that here. So to do anything else, we are going to need to open up another window. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled up another terminal so we can continue on to task six, which is opening applications as a background process. So as I already mentioned, when you run the program, you are unable to run any other commands in the terminal window since that session is occupied by Firefox. So um, you can have programs and processes running in the foreground and the background though. So to start a program in the background, you can um, do the following command using an ampersand. So you can do that. Or you could do that. So they're going to do the same thing. Pull up a window. All right, so now we will move on to task seven, which is text editing with LeafPad. So we can use a text editor in Kali Linux to open text files for editing. So if we run the following command, So um, we can use a text editor to um, create the file and leafpad to open the leafpad program so we can edit the file. So we'll type in our message, password is password, and then we will save and quit. So then again at the terminal window we can now type cat my secret. And the cat command should print the message in the file that we just created, which it did. All right. Okay, so now we'll move on to task eight, which is image viewer. So Restretto is an image viewer that we'll be using for this task in the lab. Um, we're first going to download an image and then view it using Restretto. So we'll first verify that we are in the home directory with CD. And now we'll download our image by typing the command wget and the URL. So wget lets you download files from the internet given a certain URL. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now we will launch Restretto and try to open the file that we just downloaded. So I will type Restretto with our name. All right, so here is our image. Um, now we will go and delete it. 
So we can delete it with the following command, rm, which is remove, and then the name. So now we're going to move on to the exfiltration portion of the lab, which is beginning with task nine, so adding a user. So to add other users, we need to use the add user command. So we can go ahead and do sudo add user john to make a john user. It will prompt us for his password, which in, we will just put john. Then we'll go ahead and hit enter to accept the defaults for the full name, etc. Um, until we get back to the command prompt. So now we will move on to task 10, which is login as a different user. So we're going to learn how to log in as John. So we'll start with who am I? Who am I will tell you who is currently logged into the account. So I see Loki is currently logged in. Yours will be different, whatever your username is. So now we can do sudo login John to log in as John. Password is John. Okay, so now we can do who am I again to see who is now logged in. And it is John. So if we want to log out of an account, we can do log out. We could also do exit. Um, so log out will log out of a login shell and then exit will exit the shell which is currently running. So um, now we will move on to task 11 which is delete user accounts. So deleting an account is quite easy. You just type the command sudo user del, so delete user, and then we will do john. And then the user will be removed from the system. Okay. So now we'll move on to task 12, which is understanding groups. So the Linux system places every user into groups. The groups help make things more logical and clear, help separate users for segregation of various tasks and permissions. So we're gonna go ahead and make three accounts with add user. We will set their passwords as their names. Then we'll make a chess club group using the group add command. So we will go ahead and start by adding three users. So our first one is Bob. For his password, we're just going to enter it as his name. So it will be Bob. Then we will accept the default for the full name, etc., by hitting enter until we return back to the terminal. Now we will add our second user, which is Billy. Billy's password will just be Billy. We'll hit enter for the defaults. Now we're going to add James. His password is James. And um, we will hit enter for the defaults. All right, so now we will make our um, chess club group by using the group add command. So we can do sudo group add chess underscore club. This will create our group. All right, so we will continue by, um, let's just go ahead and I will explain later. Right, so what did we do here? So again, we started by making our three users, we made our group, um, and then with this command, we added both um, Billy and Bob as well to the chess club group. And we did that with this command right here. 
Um, and so we didn't add James, um, which kind of helps to show how information can be restricted to only certain people, um, so only they can view it. So then we ran the groups command to view um, which groups a user is part of. So we can see that Bob and Billy are both part of the chess club group. James is not a part of anything. <laughs> so, all right, so now we'll move on to task 13, which is understanding user permissions. So we'll learn a bit about permissions, which are very vital um, to any Linux systems administrations and security. So we'll start with the command ls-l in the slash home slash kali directory. So I will enter it. Again, you don't need the slash home um, part, but if you want to, you can. And again, um, your username will replace where I have Loki. Okay, so at the beginning of each line, you can see um, a string of text, so DRW, XR, etc. Um, so in this scenario, D stands for directory, and then the R is for read, the W is for write, and the X is for execute. So there are, are also separate permissions for the three um, different groups of users, and so those would be owners, groups, and others. So now we'll move on to task 14, which is changing permissions. We can use the chmod command to change permissions for a specific file or folder. So we're, we're going to start with the touch command, which will either update the timestamp of an existing file or create a new file if the file name does not already exist. And then we'll go ahead and try our chmod. We'll do touch new file. ls l new file all right so we can see that the permissions have changed from here to here with our command that we did. So um, the owner can read, write, and execute, but groups and others can only write. So we will learn about that in a minute um, with the notation 722. So um, read, write, and execute are um, pretty much denoted with their own number or value. So um, R or read is four, W or write is two, and X or execute is one. So in um, this scenario, four plus two plus one is equal to seven. So in our case, the owner can perform all, so they can read, write, and execute, but then groups and others have a two. So they can only write because two um, stands for W or write. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, so for a bit of reflection, um, if you had a folder named stuff that you wanted to make readable and writable for the owner and readable by groups and others, you would do chmod 644 stuff. Since read is four, write is two, the owner would be six because they can read and write. And then groups and others would be a four since four is read and they can read. All right, so another question, if we had a permission of, let me type it out. If we had, oh, let's pretend that is a capital. All right, so if we had this um, as a permission, then you can see the owner can read, they can't write, but they can execute. Groups can read and write but they can't execute. And then others can only write, so they can't um, read or execute. So the dashes kind of show um, what they can't do. All right, so this is going to wrap up our demo video on introduction to Linux. I really hope you enjoyed this video.